On the national political landscape, the Times seemed ripe for a progressive United States president. And one emerged, if only by a twist of fate. Six months after being elected president for the second time, William McKinley was assassinated, and his running mate, 42-year-old Vice President Theodore Roosevelt, succeeded him in 1901. He was the youngest person ever to hold that office. Roosevelt was born into a wealthy family, and although he suffered from asthma, he was determined to live an active life. From marksmanship, to horseback riding and tennis, to boxing and hunting, to his heroic exploits with the Rough Riders during the Spanish-American War, Teddy Roosevelt proved a popular leader, first as governor of New York and then as president. When asked why people so adored him, he said he thought it was because... I put into words what is in their hearts and minds, but not their mouths. Roosevelt outlined many progressive reforms to the American public and gave his plan a name, the Square Deal. When Roosevelt assumed office, over 80% of American business was owned by trusts. Although Congress had already enacted the Sherman Antitrust Act, it had not stopped the trusts from using unfair business practices to destroy their competition. Roosevelt began by suing the Northern Securities Railroad Trust. And in 1904, the Supreme Court agreed that the trust had become a monopoly and ordered it dissolved. Roosevelt's administration filed over 40 more suits. They pursued the beef industry, Standard Oil, the American Tobacco Company, and many other trusts. Americans overwhelmingly returned Roosevelt to the presidency in 1904 as he continued his work as a trust buster and a staunch proponent of governmental regulation of business. The many other progressives who were serving in local, state, and federal government helped Roosevelt to get the support he needed to get his proposed laws passed, like Mayor Samuel Golden Rule Jones of Toledo, Ohio, Governors Charles Acock of North Carolina, Albert Cummins of Iowa, and Fighting Bob La Follette of Wisconsin both of whom became United States senators. Two years after his re-election, Roosevelt saw the Hepburn Act become law, which gave the Federal Interstate Commerce Commission the power to regulate the maximum fees railroads could charge. Roosevelt next turned his attention to questions surrounding public health. Like most Americans, he was horrified when he read Upton Sinclair's The Jungle and even considered becoming a vegetarian he appointed a commission to investigate Sinclair's claims. A man could run his hand over these piles of meat and sweep off handfuls of the dried dung of rats. These rats were nuisances, and the packers would put poisoned bread out for them. They would die, and then rats, bread, and meat would go in the hoppers together. Sinclair's charges of unsanitary conditions proved to be true. The commission confirmed his description of potted ham as a hash containing ground rope and pigskin. So in 1906, with Roosevelt's urging, Congress adopted the Meat Inspection Act. Federal inspectors would now guarantee safe, sanitary meat. That same year, more reforms followed with the passage of the Pure Food and Drug Act. Manufacturers now had to list the contents of foods and drugs on labels and could not make exaggerated claims about a medicine's benefits. No deleterious drug, chemical, or preservative could be used in medicines or foods. Roosevelt brought the same enthusiasm to protecting America's natural resources that he did to leveling the business playing field. After graduating from Harvard University, a young Theodore Roosevelt had worked as a cattle rancher in the Dakotas. He quickly realized that ranchers were allowing cattle to overgraze the Great Plains that farmers had cut down forests and plowed under the prairies, and that America's natural resources were being squandered. What will happen when our forests are gone, when the coal, the iron, the oil, and the gas are exhausted? As president, Roosevelt withdrew 148 million acres of forest land from public sale, an area larger than Germany. On the advice of his friend, naturalist John Muir, Roosevelt established over 50 wildlife sanctuaries, five national parks, and designated 18 national monuments. 
He also put fellow conservationist Gifford Pinchot in charge of supervising the national forests. The nation was obsessed by a fury of development. The American Colossus was fiercely intent on appropriating and exploiting the riches of the richest of all continents. Roosevelt was so determined that Americans realized that the country's resources were not endless that he even banned Christmas trees in the White House. Theodore Roosevelt ignored tradition and redefined the image and scope of the President of the United States. He chose to be vibrant, visible, and accessible. Roosevelt was the people's choice throughout America, and in turn, America allowed him to use what he called his bully pulpit to accomplish his goals of reform and governmental regulation. However, a third term as president wasn't in keeping with tradition. So bowing to president, Roosevelt instead handpicked his successor.